morning, guys. Thank you all. Um, I love um, getting to hear you guys worship. Um, that was powerful. It was awesome um, this morning. And so um, I just want you all to know I'm excited um, for an opportunity. Ridge um, has given me an opportunity to get up here um, in front of you guys there, getting to enjoy some family time. Um, as ministers, Sundays are hard to, to kind of take off. And so um, Ridge freed up um, or got freed up this weekend to have an opportunity to go and to Floyd Data, where his son Nathan is um, a minister there at a church, um, and to get to go and enjoy time with them, um, enjoy time worshiping um, with them. And so um, I know they're thankful for an opportunity, but I'm thankful to Ridge for an opportunity to get up here in front of you guys um, this morning. Um, I know this morning's kind of gotten off to, to a different start. Um, than, than maybe a typical Sunday. I know worship was a little shorter um, at the beginning, um, but I wanted you all to know um, we did that intentionally um, so that we could worship a little more at the end. Um, and so I, I'm excited um, for an opportunity as um, we work through God's Word this morning um, for the, the end of our message to get to just stand um, before our God and worship Him. And so um, I'm just letting y'all know um, that's why it's a little bit different, okay? Um, so we're going to get to worship a little more at the end, um, and, and the band does such a great job um, of leading us in that. Um, I'm going to give another little disclaimer. I know Jeff's already announced this, but man, we are um, less than two weeks away. Um, Larissa informed us um, of D now. Um, look, Jeff has done an incredible job um, getting a team together to come and lead for D now. Um, they've got um, an awesome plan. The theme this year is voices. Um, and so um, kind of talking about who, who's informing um, your um, the way you live your life, um, the decisions you make, what, what are the voices that are really speaking um, to you? And so um, he's done a great job um, planning. He's got some great leaders. He's got a great speaker, um, a great band. Um, so I want to encourage you, if you're a student, um, annoy your parents until they sign you up, okay? If you're a parent, um, just go ahead and sign them up, okay? Um, it's going to be an awesome weekend. They've got, um, you, you're going to have a free weekend. They're going to be staying at a host home, um, so you'll have some freedom there. Um, they're going to have good food. They're going to be taken care of. So um, get them signed up. It's going to be um, a great weekend. Um, so uh, this morning, um, kind of what we're going to be talking about, and I kind of want you all to, to kind of have this thought um, as we move forward, and this kind of be our thought um, or, or um, kind of what we're thinking about as we move forward through this, um, this sermon, is um, what would it look like if we as Christ followers and as disciples of Memorial Baptist lived in such a way that our faith were to ring out, okay? And when I say ring out, I mean like a sound, okay? Like sound out. What if we lived in a way that our faith sounded out um, in our schools, in our homes, um, in our neighborhoods, um, in, in our county um, in our country, um, even as far as the world. Because I'll tell you right now, I firmly believe, um, and I'm passionate about this, that I believe that something can happen starting here um, at Memorial Baptist Church in Temple, Texas. But it's going to take something, okay? Um, it's not going to happen if we show up on a Sunday morning and we hear a good message, we worship, and then we go home and we binge watch Netflix, or go home and just watch football. And then we go to work and we just, same thing, um, different day, okay? Like it's not going to change if that's how um, we approach um, worship and we approach God. So the thought I want you all to have is what would it look like for our faith to ring out, okay? For it to sound out. And we're going to spend some time in First uh, Thessalonians um, this morning kind of looking at um, their faith um, and seeing how Paul addresses them. And so, um, but if any of y'all have had an opportunity, I know not everyone has an opportunity or maybe even desires to step into the youth room. Um, it probably smells a little different than the rest of the church. Um, but if you're brave enough to step into the youth room um, for a little bit, first of all, it's a blast. The youth are awesome. Jeff is doing such a good job there. And it's, it's a fun um, amped up, energetic environments to so step in there um, and see what they're doing. But if you step in there right now, Jeff has created this banner um, that says more than a weekend. It's not always up in there. We just put it up um, a week or two ago. 
um, but it says more than a weekend, okay? And now, the theme of D now is voices. We just talked about it a second ago, but this is kind of a sub-theme that Jeff has kind of set for the weekend, okay? Um, and, and the reason that's significant, and I think Jeff, Jeff nailed it um, with this sub-theme of more than a weekend, is that Jeff recognizes that if um, these students show up, they hear a great speaker, they worship to awesome music, um, there's maybe even lights and smoke, whatever, um, they've got great leaders, great food, um, awesome host homes. If they show up and, and that's what happens, and Monday morning they set foot back in um, their classrooms and still talk to their coaches and their teachers the same way, if they still participate in the gossip with their friends, if they still watch the same things on TV or hear the same things on the radio um, and nothing happens, then it was all for nothing, right? And so he's created this kind of sub-theme of, look, we want this to be more than this awesome weekend of D-Now, but we want this to become a lifestyle of discipleship. We've been on this theme, and Ridge has done such a good job of walking us through what does it look like to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, and we've hit on some different topics and some different areas um, that we as followers of Christ um, need to practice to become disciples, okay? Um, the word disciple it means a disciplined follower of a master, okay? And our master as believers is Jesus Christ. And the, the following of Jesus Christ is through his word. And so if we're going to have more than a weekend for D now, something's going to have to happen that weekend. Some changes are going to have to occur, okay? And so um, I think Jeff nailed it with that. Here's what um, the book of James kind of has to say about this idea of more than a week and a half. Kind of titled my message, um, More Than a Message, and kind of with a subtitle to that as well, just kind of piggybacking off of Jeff's um, sub theme for D now. But this is what James says on this topic. James 1, starting in verse 21. It says, Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Look, if we sit in this room week after week, we sing and we hear good music, we hear um, a good message, um, we take notes, maybe we even have a stack of notes from our year or a decade or however long you've been a part of here. We've got filing cabinets, so maybe you have um, notes. But if we walk out of here and we treat our spouses the same, we parent our kids the same way, we show up to work and we um, treat our coworkers or our bosses the same way. We talk behind um, our bosses back the same way. We watch the same stuff on TV, listen to the same stuff on the radio. Then we've forgotten this perfect law that James is talking about. He says, you're like a man that goes and you look at the mirror intently. Some of y'all did that this morning. You, you looked in the mirror intently as you were getting ready. And he says, it's like you went and you got ready this morning looking intently and you walked away and you completely forgot what you looked like. He says, it's the same thing when we approach God's word and we hear what he says, he, we hear what he's commanded us to do and we walk away and we totally forget it. We walk away and we're in the same addictions, the same habits, um, the same, uh, same things we listen to, we've talked about. Look, if we walk away, then it was for nothing. We've forgotten what the perfect law of God, and he says it's the perfect law that gives freedom. Freedom from those addictions. Freedom um, from these things, these voices um, that are um, teaching us and, and informing our opinions on things. He says, no, you got freedom from that. He says, just go to my word. Okay? And so that's kind of where we're at this morning 
Um, this, I want this to be more than a message. I want this to be more than just a Sunday where you came and you heard the Word of God, you sang a song, and then you left, and your week looks exactly the same. That's like the worst thing that could happen this morning. And look, I'm going to be so bold to say this, and I'm saying it from a place of grace. That if that's you this morning, if you hear this word, you come and you worship, and you leave and you're the same, with all the grace in my heart, please don't come and tell me good job. Because the word of God has not changed the way that you've lived. You haven't heard from it. Because when we hear from the word of God, we're changed. Okay? And I say that from a place of grace. Look, we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians. And I want this idea of what would it look like. Please think about this as we're going through. What would it look like for our faith to ring out, to sound out to, the, to our neighborhood, to our county, to our country, and out to the world? What would it look like for our faith to ring out? Open up in 1 Thessalonians with me. We'll be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, starting in verse 2. I'll give you some time to get there. I'll tell you this, and this may uh, make you excited. My notes are a lot shorter than they have been in the past, and so that could potentially be a great thing for y'all. We may finish this thing up early, so um, we'll see what happens. But let's open up to 1 Thessalonians 1, Thessalonians 1 and starting in verse 2, this is... Um, Paul writing to the church of um, Thessalonica. He says, We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in, your, in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you welcomed the message in the midst of some severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned from God, to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, God, we love you. And God, as we open your word this morning, God, we pray um, that your word would penetrate our hearts. God, that this wouldn't just be another Sunday morning. God, that this wouldn't just be another message. But God, as we open your word, Lord, that it would penetrate our hearts. God, I pray that this wouldn't be anything just for my thoughts or, um, or my interpretation of your word, but Lord, that you would speak this morning. God, we don't want to be here if you're not present with us. And so, God, we ask that you would speak to our hearts this morning. Lord, that you would um, provoke change um, from the way that we've been living. And, Lord, that um, as a byproduct, Lord, our faith would ring out, God, the same way it did um, from the church in Thessalonica, that it would ring out not only to our local areas but everywhere. God, that's our prayer this morning, that we would leave differently and Lord, that we would live a life where our faith rings out. God, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to go through just a couple things real quick of, of what it would look like or what it has to look like for our faith to ring out, okay? So the first thing um, that's going to have to happen if our faith is going to ring out is we must have an affection for Jesus Christ. And that love and that affection for Jesus has to drive us towards the Word of God. Okay? 
When I say a love and affection, like a, a joy um, knowing what Jesus Christ has accomplished on the, on the cross, and so we have this love for Jesus in light of that. And look, that, that may look differently for each of us this morning, okay? That, there's room for this right here, for you to be hurt, um, for there to be pain and anxiety um, and all those things, depression, and still have a love for the Lord, okay? For some of us, we are on um, a spiritual high, and our love for the Lord is huge, and for some of us, we're in a season where if we, we picture this thing as like a candle and a flame, like our wick is just red right at the tip. But it's there, okay? So that may be some of us. We may be on this spectrum where um, our love is through the roof for God right now. And our love on this side, man, maybe we're just hanging on, but we still have a love um, for the Lord. So there's room, and I want you to know that there's room for brokenness, there's room for hurt, um, in this affection for Jesus. But um, if our faith is going to ring out, we have to have an affection um, for Jesus. Okay? And our affection from Jesus comes from salvation, um, which we recognize as through the cross um, of Christ. Okay? And so, um, this is what um, God's Word says um, about this. Um, as Jesus is, is kind of Wrapping up his final days here on earth in John 17, is, um, he's praying um, the high priestly prayer, right? And he's praying for, um, for his disciples, um, he's praying for the world, he's praying for us. Um, the, the, if, if you haven't read um, John 17, I encourage you to do so. Um, it's literally Jesus' words praying for you 2,000 years ago. It's incredible. Um, but this is what he says. He says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Now, if you hear the word sanctify and you're like, what in the world does that even mean? It means simplified. It means to be made in the image of Christ, to be made more like Christ, to grow in our, our love and our affection um, for Jesus, to, to look more like him, okay? And so um, he says, sanctify them by the truth. And you may say, well, what is truth? And he says, your word is truth, talking about the word of God. Okay, in Luke 10, um, 27, this is when he's, he's put on um, the floor and they say, hey, hey God, what's the greatest commandment in all um, of the commandments? And in the Old Testament, there's like 300 something, I don't even know. There's a ton of commandments, okay? And they're trying to trick him, and this is what he says as the greatest commandment. He answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. That sounds like an affection and a love for Jesus, right? A love for God. And then the follow-up to that is, and love your neighbor as yourself. And that's a byproduct of that first commandment. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. And look, for some of us, some of those areas are a little harder than the others. I know I find it harder for myself to love the Lord my God with all my mind. To really engage God's word with my mind, and it's something that I'm growing in. But I've had to intentionally surround myself with people like Jeff. I've got a friend um, named Caleb back home that um, I'm encouraged every time I'm around him because he challenges me to engage my mind um, with the Word of God. I mean, not just opening and just reading God's Word just to, to accomplish it, but really digging in and seeing, God, what does this look like for my life? For some of y'all, it maybe it may it's harder to love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all of the fiber of your being. For some of y'all, it's harder um, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with kind of an emotion attached to it. Maybe you're not very emotional. Look, all these things kind of come together, and God, in his perfect design, created the church and gave personalities to each one of us where some of these things are a little bit easier, but he's saying you have to have all these things. And so he says get around other people that are going to help you grow in your affection for Jesus in these different areas. 
So he commands us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And so I want to ask you this. What if instead of showing up to work every week and people saying, man, he's a, he's a good salesman or, or she's a good nurse or, um, man, he is a great football player or, man, she is um, a great and outstanding athlete on the basketball court or vice versa, man, maybe that, that guy can't catch a football to save his life or hit a baseball to save his life um, or maybe you're just um, kind of, just kind of average at your job, what if instead people identified us as, man, you love, like, they're, they're a good nurse, or, man, they're a terrible football player, or a great football player, or whatever it may be, instead of being defined by that, what if people said, yeah, like, they're good at that, but um, they love Jesus. Like, people knew us because we loved Jesus. Yeah, like, he's a little bit weird, or she's a little bit different, but man, they love Jesus. How is that going to be noticed? Man, what do you talk about? Do you ever talk about Jesus with your coworkers? Do you ever talk about Jesus with your neighbors or the person sitting next to you um, at your desk? Or the guy that you're strapped up in football pads next to? Do you ever talk about it? Would they know by the things that you listen to? Would they know by the things you watch on TV? That's kind of what this whole voices thing is about. Do they notice anything different about you? So what if instead people didn't recognize us by our profession Or how good or maybe not so good we are on the athletic field. But they knew us by our love for Jesus. And that's only going to grow as we spend time in God's word. He was very intentional about leaving his word and preserving his word for us. So that we could know the heart behind the master. Behind the father behind why his son died for us. Because he loved you so much. He wanted you as his adopted children so much that he took his actual son and crucified him on the cross to bring you into the fold of the family. And only out of that does our love and affection grow for Jesus. So we have to be in God's word. Okay? Look, for a lot of us, that's going to take some serious reordering of our life. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But for some of us, that's going to mean, man, maybe we change the way we approach social media. Man, we can be so divisive on there with our political preferences or opinions or just our opinions in general. It's so easy to hide behind a screen and just say the things, type the things you want, and act like there's no consequences. But it's so divisive. Man, it may have to change and reorder the way we spend our money. Gail does such a good job of of leading us in financial peace, and I think there's one starting up here um, pretty soon, but I won't spoil that for her and sharing. Um, some of y'all need to, to, to think about the way you're spending money. Take financial peace. Reorder the way um, that you do things around the gospel. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself. We're going to come back to that. So the second thing and the last thing we're going to talk about That if we're going to live a life that our faith rings out to those around us, our lives have to be ordered around the gospel. We talked about reordering our life just a second ago. It has to be reordered, reoriented around the gospel. 
I think a lot of times what happens is the opposite. Is that we order the gospel around our lives. Well, this is kind of inconvenient, God, that you would ask me um, to maybe give some money um, because I don't really have a whole lot in the bank account. Haven't you noticed? Um, maybe it's a little inconvenient. Man, God, I kind of like watching these TV shows. Um, I don't know if I want to stop. Or, God, this is my, my kind of music. Um, I, I kind of enjoy this. I don't, I don't really appreciate you stepping in and telling me I shouldn't listen to that. Or, man, maybe, God, I like to eat whatever I want, and I don't really want you to tell me how to eat. And look, I'm not talking about legalistically, like, Jewish law, but look, some of us need to think about our health. This is the temple that God has given you. And so I think a lot of times we order our lie or order the gospel around our lives. So what's going to have to happen if our faith is going to ring out is that we flip that on its head and we order our lives around the gospel of Jesus. That's going to be hard for all of us. And I put myself um, in that category. Look, preparing for this I have a lot of passion behind it, and I'm excited because I know that when God and his power starts to move, that things can happen. But I'll tell you that, look, in preparing for this, God starts revealing, like, man, God, you, Brayden, you've got a lot of pride in this area. Or, hey, Brayden, like, there's some holes in your life where maybe you haven't given me complete access to. Or or complete control over. And I'll tell you that hurts. That's not fun. But if change is going to happen, if our life and our faith is going to ring out, look, if you read through Thessalonians, I'm not talking just 1 Thessalonians 1, but Thessalonians 1 and 2. If you read Timothy, if you read Romans, He talks so much about suffering. If you look at Paul's life, there's a lot of suffering. And some of that was self-inflicted, and I'm not talking about like hurting yourself or anything like that, but he knew that it was going to be hard, that it was going to hurt, that it wasn't going to be comfortable, and he intentionally did that for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of his faith ringing out to those around him. Look, read in here and see how many times you see the word suffering. And a lot of times the word joy is attached to it. Joyful suffering. Read Hebrews 12. It says he considered pure joy to hang on the cross for you can't tell me there wasn't a lot of suffering in that. Go and read in the garden. Man, he's crying tears of blood. He's sweating blood because he's asking, God, is there any other way that you can accomplish this? God says, nope. This is how we got to do it. And that joyful suffering placed him on that cross and held him there. Because he knew it was the only way to accomplish what he had come to accomplish. And that was to bring you into the fold of the family of, of God. So what is it going to look like? If our faith is going to ring out, what is it going to look like to order your sleeping habits, your studying habits, your health habits, Maybe your social habits. Maybe some of y'all are some recluses and you're like, man, I don't like people. Um, I get that. Um, Some of us are introverts. But look, God has told us that, look, the way that they're going to know you're my disciples is by loving one another. Go into 1 John. It says you have to have a love for people. Okay, so it's maybe going to reshape. Maybe we're going to have to get a little uncomfortable in our anxiety of being around people and say, no, God, I know if my faith is going to ring out, that I've got to get around people. 
What about our financial habits and our political opinions? Look, if you put Democrat, Republican up, and you go through and just look at everything they're for, I could spot out things in each one of those. That I, could say, I, I could see how Jesus could be for that. Okay? Either side. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. And I can also look and say, I don't know if Jesus would be for those things. Okay? So how about we set that aside? I'm not saying don't vote. Participate in voting. That's something that we're supposed to do. But how about instead of allowing our political opinions to be divisive, how about we say, you know what, I'm going to set that aside because the gospel of Jesus means more than a political opinion. All right? Maybe that means you need to get off social media and stop posting about all your political opinions. Because they're divisive. And how about we bring people into the fold and instead of being divisive, we're peacemakers. So what is it going to look like to order those things around the gospel? In 1 Thessalonians, what we just read, um, starting in verse 5, kind of towards the end of verse 5, he says, You know we lived among you for your sake. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering. And here we go, we, we see the word suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all believers in Macedonia in Achaia, the Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Look, that didn't happen by them hearing the word of God, hearing the message of Jesus Christ, and saying, you know what? That sounds good. Paul, man, you spoke so well and so clearly. You know, I'll add Jesus to my idols and I'll worship them. I'll just kind of add him to the group of things I'm already worshiping. I'll just, I'll, I like that. It sounds good. I think that's really cool that he, he died for me. Um, so I'll just, I'll just kind of bring him in this. No, that didn't happen. Like their message didn't ring out. They weren't a model for people everywhere because they just kind of haphazardly listened to, to it and, and just kind of continued on with their life. No, the reason that their message rang out and they were a model to everyone everywhere it's because they ordered their life around the gospel. He says in the midst of severe suffering, this wasn't easy for them. I mean, these guys were being persecuted to the point of death. And not just like get shot death, like, no, like they were being tortured and tormented, ripped away from families. But they allowed their lives to be ordered around the gospel and that allowed their message to ring out to everyone everywhere. Romans 12.1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Offering your body as a living sacrifice does not sound fun, does it? He says that's what it's going to take for the message of God to ring out, for your faith to ring out. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be hard things. But order your life around the gospel and God's going to do some incredible stuff. So, I want you to think about yourself, not the person next to you, not your husband or your wife or your kids, but I want you to think right now, what is it going to look like for my life to live a life where my faith rings out? What kind of changes are going to have to happen? What am I going to have to say no to? Or maybe what am I going to have to say yes to for that to be the case? Look, I believe that something powerful can happen here at Memorial Baptist in Temple, Texas. 
Look, we are, God has placed us in a spot where we are surrounded by thousands of homes. Thousands of people that if they don't hear the message of Jesus Christ, will spend eternity in hell. Is, is the, the reality of what we believe. Do you love them so much that you're willing to reorder your life so that they can hear the message of Jesus? So we can bring them into the fold of the family of God. It's not going to be easy. Look, I'm going to ask the band to go ahead and come on up. But look, we go back to this thought that we started out with. What is it going to look like for our faith to be lived in such a way that it rings out to our community, to our country, to the world? That it rings out in our schools, at our workplace, in our homes? What is it going to look like? Look, this is hard. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable as I was preparing this. I've told you. But I know the God we serve. And he's a powerful God. And if our lives begin to get oriented around the gospel of Christ, if it's ordered around the gospel, powerful things are going to happen. But it's going to have to be more than a weekend. It's going to have to be more than just a Sunday message or a Sunday worship service. More than a Wednesday night. It has to become a lifestyle. So how is that going to affect when you walk out these doors today? What's going to have to change? Look, God's still working on me. This isn't from a place of you need to change. This is from a place of um, God saying, hey, Braden, you need to get rid of some of this pride over here, and I need access to this over here. It's not easy. But man, I want to see God move. Let's pray. God, we love you. God, as we um, approach worship this morning, God, I pray that our heart is in in a place of um, expectancy. So God, as we continue to worship through song, God, we expect to hear from you. God, we expect for you to move. God, I pray as your word's been spoken, Lord, that that has penetrated our hearts. God, I pray that we wouldn't leave here the same person. But God, that you've already started to reveal some areas in our life that, um, that you want to have control over and access to. Maybe some things that we need to shed or put off, God, so that um, our faith can ring out. God, maybe some of us haven't entered into a relationship with you and that needs to happen. Because all this doesn't matter until that happens. So God, I pray for um, any person in this room that that hasn't declared you as um, Lord of their life. God, that you would be at work on their hearts right now. God, that you would draw them into the fold of your family. God, that they would see the cross, they'd see what Jesus accomplished on the cross, and Lord, that that would draw them to you. God, we love you. God, we ask that you would move right now. Lord, that as we um, step before your throne, God, in in worshiping and praising, Lord, that, um, that you would move. God, we love you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.